Thank you very much. So yes, I'm an astrophysicist. Some people tell me I'm a rocket scientist. A lot of people tell me you must be smart. But I'm going to give you a secret. I used to claim I had no accent. <laughs> Maybe not that smart, huh? <laughs> and every one of you is smart. And I'm going to show you tonight that every one of you is an astrophysicist. You see, because astrophysicists, we are time travelers. And you are too. So I want you to turn to your favorite person in this room. Go on. I'm assuming that's the person sitting next to you. <laughs> and you're not actually seeing this person as they are this very moment. You are seeing them as they were a billionth of a second ago. Because that's how long it takes the light to travel from the person sitting next to you to you. You know, San Francisco is three and a half hours away if you win a lottery and there is no traffic. <laughs> but it only takes light a thousandth of a second to travel from San Francisco to here. Every time you look at the sun, and please don't do this without protection. It's really <laughs> stupid if you do. <laughs> you will see the sun as it was eight minutes ago. So we are time travelers. And tonight, I'm going to take you to the, on a journey to the very first galaxies in the universe. But we'll start here at home, Lake Tahoe. The beautiful night sky, as you would see it in about February. You can see Orion right in the middle of this picture. There's some lines to help you guide your eyes. And you see a band of milky-like structure that goes across the sky. Well, it turns out that band of Milky-like structure is our own galaxy, the Milky Way. So here it is in a movie. This movie has been made by astronomers. Every single star is where, it, where we measure it to be. Every star that you will see in this movie is at its correct color. And what we will do now is we'll do two special effects. One is we'll travel way, way faster than the speed of light. And the other one, you'll see some beautiful images in there that we took with Hubble Space Telescope and other telescopes. So let's start this journey. Quite quickly, you see Orion being just a chance superpositions of stars. So all our constellations don't actually belong together. And we fly through to the Orion Nebula. So that red nebula is the birthplace of the stars. And you should remember it, because we'll come back to it later. This journey would take light 1,500 years. And we just did it like that. Now that's Hollywood to you. <laughs> OK? And as we travel further, we see other birthplaces of stars. Here is the Rosetta Nebula. And where stars are being born, stars, of course, also die. So we are also witnessing, in the next moment, a death place of a star. You see, when a star dies, it expels its envelope and pushes it out and makes this beautiful image that we are about to approach right now. So the second special effect that's in this movie is all these images have been enlarged by a factor of 10, just so you can see them better. But they're the actual images that we take with our telescopes. Soon we are flying out of our own Milky Way, and we will see our Milky Way from the outside. And you can see it's a beautiful spiral <laughs> galaxy. We live in a pretty special place, except there is many more of those. In fact, our neighbor that we are going to reach quite soon is also a spiral galaxy, Andromeda galaxy. And in front of Andromeda galaxy in the background, you will see another galaxy in the foreground. That's the M33. So this is the closest big galaxy to our own galaxy. And this journey would take light 2.2 million years. We are very, very far. 
but we've only seen a few galaxies. We want to see many, many more. For that, astrophysicists use the best telescopes in space. So here it is, Hubble Space Telescope. It's a school bus sized telescope, 300 miles above us in space, taking pictures of the stars every single day. But the pictures that Hubble sends us back are tiny. In fact, here is another view of Tajo, and you can see on the right hand side on the sky, the moon. To make you guide the eye, I'll make it a little bit bigger for you. And in that very tiny little red square is the size of the image that Hubble sends us back. That's the field of view of Hubble Space Telescope. And every time we take an image of the sky, that tiny little piece there, it's much smaller than the moon, we see 10,000 galaxies. So, I'm a professor, so I'm going to give you lessons. And you better pay attention because there'll be an exam at the end. So lesson number one, there are lots of galaxies in the universe. What is lots? It's 100 billion galaxies. Huge number. And you saw in those movies that each and every one of those galaxies has stars in them. So there are lots more stars in the universe, and lots more is a billion trillion galaxies in the universe. It's a ginormous number, one and 21 zeros. Okay, so for your exam, you'll have to tell me how big is this number. It's big. So if you wrote, I love snow on a blackboard as a penance 10 trillion billion times. Okay, everybody texts these days. So if you text I love snow on your phone trillion billion times, the size of this text, and you better have unlimited subscription for that, <laughs> the size of this text would be from here to the Orion Nebula that you just saw in the movie. Huge. There's lots of stars in the universe. But we want to push further. And we want to see those very first galaxies that form in the universe. And the way we do that is we become time travelers. We look very far away. Remember, it takes eight minutes for the light to come from the sun. So if you look far enough away, you will see the universe as it was in the very past. So we go long time ago, and we go to a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> Isn't it great when Hollywood makes an intro for your research? Yeah, everybody loves this, right? So hopefully you'll also love the actual galaxies far, far away. And here they are. They're little red smidgets, but they contain a lot of stars, and they're teaching us about the very beginning of the universe. The universe started, our universe started long, long time ago. The number is 13.8 billion years ago. Once again, Billion might not seem such a big number to you right now, but the difference between a million and a billion is huge. A million seconds is two weeks. A billion seconds is 30 years. So now we are 13.8 billion years ago and we start with the Big Bang. To make you picture a little bit better how long ago that really is, I decided to squeeze that time in one year time. So we start with the Big Bang on January 1st, and we are now at TEDx South Lake Tahoe on December 31st. So our Milky Way formed on April 1st on that timeline. Our solar system formed on August 31st. 
Those very first galaxies that you just saw that we observed with Hubble formed on January 10th. So we are seeing all the way back to the beginning of the universe, to the first light, to the origins. And it turns out that these very first galaxies later formed our own galaxy. Only 10 seconds before midnight is when we invented the wheel. <laughs> so all this research has happened in such a minute time of our own universe. So lesson number two, our Milky Way formed out of those very first galaxies, and so you're witnessing the true origin of our own galaxy. But we want to go further. We want to push the research even further, and we want to see, is there oxygen in those galaxies? Is there carbon? Is there life around other planets? And for that reason, we are building a billion dollar instrument that we are going to send in space. Not a school bus size like Hubble, James Webb Space Telescope is going to be a tennis court size telescope that we are sending in space. And it will do great wonders when it launches in 2021. So let me leave you with the one last lesson. I already told you there are lots of stars in the universe. It turns out there are also lots of planets in the universe. Every time we look around other stars and we look deep enough, we see planets. So we have trillion or billion planets and more. Great, right? So many planets, so much to do with them. Well, I need to disappoint you. There is no planet B. The closest planet that could ha inhabit life, it takes light 10 years to reach it. It would take us 100,000 years to reach it with current technology. And it doesn't have skiing on it. <laughs> so no, there is no plan B and there is no planet B. So you better take care of our planet because to be honest, it's screaming at us. <laughs> Sorry to be blunt, but it will take scientists to tell us how to cure this poor little planet. But it will take all of us to actually do it. And we have to do it because there is no planet B. So let me leave you by saying, love each other and love our planet because it's the best we have. Thank you very much. Yeah.